Obviously, there are a number of issues, as we just mentioned, but when it comes to food regulation and drinks as well. First, let's talk about the most serious, some 94 deaths from toxic alcohol. How prevalent is this type of liquor? How, how can this happen? Um, thank you for having me on the show. Um, I, I think all the examples that you've just uh, sort of, uh, you know, talked about demonstrate that while there are regulations and while the government does have regulations in place, obviously slip-ups happen. And um, the responsibility for monitoring and making sure that food products are up to a certain standard while a certain amount rests with the government, I think there is an equal amount of responsibility that manufacturers, producers, large business houses also have to take for this. There are industry associations, for example, the Confederation of Indian Industries, um, Indian Association of Pediatrics, and I think it's a collective responsibility. I think what we're seeing here is that these things are harder to monitor. For example, in the case of the uh, illicit alcohol example that we saw, because that's obviously a much smaller scale manufacturer and you need community and civil society engaged there. But for the larger uh, companies as well, we need to have systems in place where uh, the businesses commit to sort of maintaining ethical standards, high quality production standards, right. and industry bodies come forward as well. And it, and it seems as though it's even more than just that. Um, you did have a number of the people distributing this alcohol arrested, and there are reports that some eight police officers were ar arrested uh, for suspected negligence. And you, we've seen hundreds killed by toxic alcohol in India before. Have previous investigations which do reveal negligence on the part of police and elsewhere, have they not resulted in reforms of any kind? So as I said, yes, of course, these instances do come up. When they do come up, the uh, authorities do take uh, sort of necessary action and steps. Um, the law are, the laws are in place, but it is, as I said, a collective responsibility. Our work at Save the Children India is very much aligned with working with the poorest communities, working with the most marginalized children to ensure that um, you know, they are not dying from preventable causes related to undernutrition, etc. And I think one of the aspects that we really need to push for is to make sure while companies are spending tons and tons of money on advertising products, which we know clearly has a harmful or may have a harmful effect on the health of people, we need to make sure that there's an equal amount of communication and uh, information going out to people about what's good for them, what's not good for them, what's but good me, for the health of children. I just want to interrupt to ask you about that. Um, how, how are things for the regular person in India on this topic? Is information being shared? I mean, you have this uh, noodle called Maggie being investigated by the USDA. Meantime, do, are people in India aware of this? Is there a sense of fear or is there just not enough information being shared? Well, I think the Maggie example is pretty much all over the news. So, yes, people are uh, aware of this and uh, consumption is obviously sort of dropped. But I think on a more ongoing basis, you see the pattern of nutrition is shifting globally. So while on the one hand you have undernutrition and malnutrition, you also have the other side of uh, obesity and health related issues, which we're seeing more and more in children. Uh, and adolescents because of their, you know, the increasing consumption of processed foods. And uh, I think there is more work to be done definitely on increasing communication and awareness on the harmful effects of consuming those sorts of food. And well, that's something I think the industry needs to take more responsibility for.